home run and has now stolen one. Fly ball center field. NCRJ on the run. Still going on the right track at the wall. He got it. NCRJ caught it on the wall. And the Braves have beaten the Mets. Incredible catch to save the game. And the Braves have stunned New York tonight. They've stunned a lot of people tonight. Maybe the catch of the year right there. Along the right field line. And Rizzo on the ledge. He's got it. Oh, what a play. <laughs> well, the bobblehead company. We got the tarp catch. Now we got the ledge catch. MLB The Show has baseball on tap from lovely City Field in New York. Tonight, the opener of a three-game series between the Miami Marlins and the New York Mets. These two should provide some big-time fireworks. First pitch is coming up. Steven Matz, a left-hander from New York State, is the starter on the mound. What do we need to know here, HR? Well, he has really pitched well at home, and I, I don't know if it's the energy from the fans or he feels comfortable on this mound. However way you want to slice it, he's thrown well at home, and I think we'll get another good performance at home in this game. At the plate, D. Gordon. He is, of course, a guy to be wary of if he gets on base. His stolen base total leads the ball club. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. Rivera is up with it. And a step on first for the out. Three unassisted. With that, a look at the batting order for the Marlins. What's the key for them to win this series opener, Harold? I think the key to this game, Matt, is working the count. I mean, you've got a guy that's really dominant on the mound, right? So you got to work his pitch count. And if you work the pitch count, now all of a sudden you might get into that bullpen. If they get in the bullpen, they're going to win this game. In is Christian Yelich. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. Four hits in 17 at bats. This is pulled into right, and that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Boy, that was a heck of a at bat. Worked the count full. Pitcher thought for sure he'd be right looking fielder. fastball. He got John a breaking Trumbo, ball, stayed Stanford. with it, and got the base hit. That's about as good as it's going to get right there. Stepping in now, Giancarlo Stanton. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And it'll fade just at the end and winds up a long foul ball. Sharp ground ball to third. And a sliding try there at third, but it skips by him, a base hit. Matt, I love this offense, and they're deep. Now, they got the leadoff guy out, but then all of a sudden, the two-hitter and the three-hitter get baseman. hits. And before you know Justin it, you're in trouble. Four. Stepping in, Justin Bohr. Entering play, he's ranked number six in the National League RBI race and with a chance to add to that total here. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Hit high but foul as that'll get in amongst the fans. Slowly hit to first. I don't think they can get two. He's got it, and they put the tag on him for the out, but meanwhile, both runners are able to move up a base. Sometimes for a first baseman, the best thing you do is just go ahead and tag the guy like that. Hey, there's a lot more that could go wrong when you try to throw to the pitcher or the second baseman covering. Second and third, two away. Lofted in the air out toward right center. After it is Granderson. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. So a good job of pitching there as they wind up stranding two men in scoring position in the opening half inning. Now the Mets will step up for their first shot in a scoreless ball game. Wei in Chen is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Marlins. What's your take on him, H? Well, if you look at his numbers, it's not going to blow you away. But he's an important guy to this team. He eats up innings. He continues to keep them in games. And if he gets a little luck along the way, he may walk away with more wins than losses. 
In is Curtis Granderson. The average just a few ticks shy of 300 for the season. So perhaps a hit or two in this one could put him up over the top. The 2 1 now to Granderson. Lays off the change up and he's ahead in the count now three and one this Marlins ball club Harold Reynolds as they begin play here tonight they're on a great run of late as they come in winners of seven of their last nine games. Well Matt this is game one of the road trip but they had a pretty nice homestand going five and two. I love the fact that they came up with some big hits when they needed to they're just playing good ball right now very consistent. The 2 1 pitch. Stung into the gap in right center for what should be extra bases. Granderson rounds the corner and is headed home. And Granderson will beat the throw home as he's in there at the plate. Just some more of the same from him. He's been clutch all year with runners in scoring position, and he does it again here with a double. Tack on another RBI to his season total. Digging in, Michael Conforto. And as you can see, he's had some troubles here in his own ballpark. That's something he'll look to improve upon in this one. Good lead there at second. Here's the pitch. At the knees for a called strike, and it's back to even at two and two. Here we are in the first inning. We're watching adjustments be made after giving up that extra base hit. Now that's better location. He's going to have a better day if he does that. And a breaking ball runs in and gets him. And I doubt there was any intent behind that. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was Batting intentional four. or not. But I right do know when a guy at the plate is a stud You're like that winner. and first base is open, there's absolutely zero reason to put the ball in the strike zone. I think he was trying to work around him, and it just got away. In now, Joanna Cespedes. Two and one. He's got a couple of pitches to deal with right here, but he's starting to lose command of his pitches. It might be time to take a step back and try to refocus on making some good pitches. From the belt, the pitch. He's fallen behind now. Three and one. Hit the last batter. Now he finds himself down three one. Look, he's just got to groove one, get himself back in the rhythm, and throw strikes. Set. Here's the 3 1. I had him guessing that time as he's barely able to foul it away. A throw behind the runner at second, and they got him. And that's hit out of play up into the plaza level. He's running again. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Once again, a 3 2. But he won't draw a throw. That's taken for ball four, and it's first and second now with one away. At this rate, he's going to set some kind of a record for walks issued in a game, or he'll get an early hook. We'll see if he can settle down here and start to find the strike zone, or if he continues to struggle. A decent lead at second. Here's the pitch. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And a fair ball as this one gets to the wall. And to score, the runner from second. Thought about going for second, but instead, now they've got him in a pickle. And now he throws on the brakes, but he can't get back to first, and he's nailed for the second out. Big mistake there. Second baseman. Stepping in, Wilma Flores. Hitting just a bit over the Mendoza line on the year. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and he pops him up over toward foul territory. 
And he will indeed make the play in foul territory to retire the side. So it's two runs on two hits, no errors, and a runner left. On now to the top half of inning number two. The Mets lead it two to nothing. Martin Prado now. He's hitting in the 270s on the season coming into this one. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Line shot to first, and there's one away. All right, time for the majestic defensive alignment for the Mets. In this day and age, when teams are moving all over the place playing the shift, these guys are old school, very traditional. You don't see the shift applied very often to this club. Now at the plate, JT Real Muto. And as you can tell easily from the splits, he's really struggled away from their home ballpark. Bases are empty, one man out. Down the first baseline, but this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. And the pitch. Hit the other way out toward right field. Cespedes is after it. Two gone. Here's Echeverria now. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. Five for 11. Here's the one and one pitch. Hit hard on the ground at first. Rivera comes up with it. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. One, two, three go the Marlins. They trail things here two to nothing. So coming to the plate, Travis Darno. The season batting average comes in down in the 240s. Now here's the pitch. Here's a high foul ball as it finds a lucky fan in the upper deck for a souvenir. Here's the one and two delivery. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Ozuna is under this one, and he's got it for the first out. All right, time for majestic defensive alignment for the Marlins. We're looking at one of the best defensive teams in the league. They're in the top five in fielding percentage. Not many balls get through here. You're going to have to earn it if you want to beat these guys. Standing in, Rene Rivera. Couple of hits for him in four trips to the plate last night. Hey. And here's a slider for a called strike, and he's behind one and two now. So let's take a peek at the umpiring crew in this one. Behind the plate is Matthew Ross. You talk about pitchers umpire. If you're working both sides of the plate, you have a tendency to be pretty effective with Matthew Ross back there. Look. There's no doubt he's a pitcher's umpire. If I was pitching in this game, I'm sending him a taxi, making sure he gets Got there safe. Nine. Hey, he's having a that's terrific right. season, keeping that average up there above the 300 mark. That's an indication right there. Two strikes, and he's still able to get the base hit. Into the box, Steven Matz. Now a bunt attempt here. Throw to second, and they get him. So the sacrifice attempt is unsuccessful here. On to first, but not in time as he's in there ahead of the throw. Uh, he three. got the bunt down, but he Turn didn't it. deaden it enough. Brandon really good side. job by the first baseman to charge in and make a good throw to second to get the lead runner. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. No official at bat for him, but he has scored a run in this one. Hey. Tough slider down low for a strike. And here's a ball hit in the air. And he'll get under it to put it away in foul territory, and that ends the inning. 
Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. We're back to Friday Night Baseball on the show after this. Standing in, Wei in Chen, 9 1 and 2 due up. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Fouled straight back. Ready on 1 and 2. And this is fouled at the plate. Fastball swung on and missed for the first down. Well, it's still early, but it's also worth noting that he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Here's D. Gordon now. 0 for 1 here in the early going. One out, nobody on. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Granderson is under it, makes the play, and there are two gone now. Now batting. Center Digging Bielich. in to try it again. Christian Yelich. He reached on a single in his first try. The two and one on its way. Now a swing and a hard hit grounder. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at two and two. He's done a nice job of getting those two quick outs before the two hitters come to the plate right now because he knows what's sitting down there down the order. So you stay aggressive against those little guys, try to get them out the way. Didn't try to do too much with it. Two strikes on him. He just now fights it off and flips right it into right field. Giancarlo Stanton. Into the box now. Giancarlo Stanton. A swing and a miss there, two and two. He swung so hard, I don't know how he stayed on his feet or kept his helmet on. I'm surprised he didn't fall down. He swung so hard. What a big swing. A swing and a miss at a sinker. The strikeout retires the side. Inning is over. Marlins leave one. They're down two to nothing. Digging in for his second at bat as Dribble Cabrera. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. The 1 1 home to Cabrera. A swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. There's another swing and strike on a fastball. He's got a nice fastball working, great pop on it, and he's keeping it high in the zone. They're going to have to lay off that if they want to have any success because you keep chasing it, they're going to keep swinging and missing. So we got him looking there as Dribble Cabrera is retired for the first out here in the bottom half of the third. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Michael Conforto. No official at bat for him, but he has scored a run in this one. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Fastball taken inside for a ball. Two and one now. Faces are empty. One man out. Two one pitches. A slider taken for a cold strike two. Into the windup. Here comes the two two pitch. And the slider gets him swinging. Two gone. No better way to minimize the potential damage a cleanup hitter can do than to strike out both guys in front of him. Always a confidence boost when you can sit down the guys at the top of the lineup. Standing in now, Joanna Cespedes. Too high that time, and it's three and one. Three one count to this guy. You don't want to challenge him right here. Don't give him anything to hit. No, no, no. Keep it on the corner. Right on the corner, a fastball that he takes for a strike. Chen's ready. Here it comes on three and two. Line shot to third, and the side is retired. Mets go down one, two, three. They're up two to nothing.
Ready for another chance. Justin Bohr. He'll lead it off against Steven Matz. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. Hit down the line at first. But this will wind up foul as he runs the count full now. Full count. Here it comes. Hard liner but picked up on a hop. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. So with that, let's call on the guys in the graphics department to put up the pitch speed comparison for the two starters. Both guys pretty close. Top speeds of 95 and 94. Here's Marcelo Zuna. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. No walks yet. Here's the delivery. Hit hard on the ground to the right. And that'll find its way into right field for a one-out single. Settling in now, Martin Prado. 0 for 1 for Martin him here in this one. Has a look, now the pitch. Hit hard back up the middle, and that's through for a hit. Oh, but the feet of the shortstop is off the mark. And as a result of that errant throw back in, he'll advance 90 feet here and move up from second to third. Well, that single right there moves runners to first and third in less than two outs, and he's been throwing a terrific game. Shut out so far, but he's going to have to figure out some magic to wiggle out of this one. Still got the double play in order. Maybe he can roll that double play ball. Ground ball sent back up the middle, and they are on the board as the run scores from third to cut the lead to 2-1 now. Oh, they're playing small ball this inning, Matt. Back to back to back Short singles. Adani Echevarria. In now, Adani Echevarria. Outside, two and one. Well, you know, giving up three straight hits is bad enough, but now it looks like he's starting to nibble a little bit. It's hard not to when you're getting hit, but you don't want to put yourself in bad counts. One run, six hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Breaking ball. That's in the dirt as he takes a ball. Hit hard towards center. And that'll get down in front of Granderson for a base hit. And they'll tie the ball game as the run scores from second to make it a 2-2 ball game now. Well, that's a nice hit. We're right back where we started with that RBI base hit. The game is tied. Stepping in now, Wei in Chen. And he'll promptly send it in the air out to center field. Catch made in center. Here comes the runner from third. And the go-ahead run will score on the sacrifice fly as this is now a three to two ball game. The batter, number Here's nine. D. Gordon now. It's been an 0 for D. 2 effort for Gordon. him to this point. He's set. Here's the 2-2. And he turns on this one and yanks it foul and back out of play. Line to the right side. And that'll get down for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Wow, his manager must have a lot of faith in him. And I'm not sure why. He's given up five hits in this inning alone. And it doesn't look like it's going to come to an end anytime soon. High in the air out to center field. Branderson is under it. He makes the play, and that'll end the inning. So they strike for three runs on five hits. No errors and a couple of men left on. To the bottom of inning number four we go. Miami's out in front, three to two. Stepping into the box, David Wright. He was cut down at second, attempting to stretch a base hit his first time through. Set to deliver on two and one. Takes a high fastball for a strike. Well, that's a high fastball in the low 90s. That is a dangerous, dangerous pitch right there. He got away with one. The guy took the pitch. Maybe he's just measuring him up. I wouldn't come back with that again. Ah, but that finds the first baseman's glove, and that's a tough first out. Wilmer. Riding in once again, Wilmer Flores. He's 0 for 1 thus far. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. 
And this is fouled back and out of play. We're in the fourth. Three to two is our score. Swing and a high pop up back onto the outfield grass now. Under it, Hechevarria for out number two. Now batting. Coming Patrick. to the plate now, Travis Darno. So oh, far, no. 0 for 1 with a flyout. And he comes back with a fastball, one and two now. Well, he really struggled in the first inning. Say struggle is kind. He really had a bad first. But, man, he's made a nice adjustment now and is really starting to dominate this game. Well, when you're hitting with two strikes, you're just in battle mode. Right there, he gets a breaking ball. He just fouled it off. Got a piece of it and stays alive. Hops this one up just beyond the infield on the right side. Gordon is there to make the catch, and the side is retired. Fair to say, oh my goodness, uh, these folks are not headed for a career on Broadway. We're back to Friday Night Baseball on the show after this. Back with Harold Reynolds and Dan Fleszak, Matt Vaskersian, and leading off the inning, the big right-handed slugger Giancarlo Stanton. Trying to send him packing for the second time hit hard on the ground is short and the fifth inning will start with a ground out one away now batting first baseman so striding Justin forward Bohr. now Justin Bohr 0 for 2 on his line thus far ready to deal here's the 1 1 looks like he swung it underwater that time for strike two drilled to the right side Flores has it. A flip from short right gets him, and there are two away. Now Left fielder. Digging in and looking Marcelo. for more, Marcelo Zuna. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Line drive to left. And that'll get down for a two out single. So the two out base hit, and the top of the inning is still alive. Well, a little two out single. Now, you may not think it's much, but he's already now given up a couple runs this Third game, so maybe this is the start Martin of something big. Prado. Into the box, Martin Prado. He offers at it and hits it in the air to left. Conforto shading to his right, and that ends the inning. One left for Miami. They're up three to two. Into the box now, Rene Rivera. He'll get his side started in the inning, and Dan, so far, they've been stifled offensively since the first inning. Boy, they sure have, Matt. They came out of the gates and got hot right away, but whatever was going for them pretty much has disappeared. We'll see if they can wake it back up. Two and two. Two and two count, here it comes. And there's one he'd like to have over again. Missed high with the slider. You can bet they'd love ball four here. That gives the pitcher on deck an obvious bunt situation to move the runner into scoring position. Payoff pitch one more time. Fastball called strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. Coming to the plate now, Steven Matz comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. Here's the 1 and 1 pitch. A good knee high changeup taken for a strike. A ball and two strikes, here's the pitch. Now a fastball taken outside here as it moves it to 2 and 2 now. All even at two and two. Here it is. And a wave and a miss on a ball that was way out of the strike zone. There are two away now. I always like watching pitchers that attack with their fastballs until there's a reason to start mixing it up. He hasn't needed many of the secondary pitches so far on this one. And there was another good fastball for a strike out there. Standing in now, Curtis Granderson. 
And Granderson trying to work his way aboard. He's got it to three and one now. This is a good at bat so far here with two away. If you're going to go down one, two, three, at least make the guy work for it. He's doing that, and he's even gotten himself into a. And the throw to first is there. The inning is over. Down in order go the Mets. They're down three to two. Ready for another chance. JT Real Muto, a hit in two tries so far. Down low, two balls and a strike. He's certainly giving up plenty of hits in this one, but the funny thing is he hasn't walked anyone yet. That tells me he's throwing strikes, but he's just not throwing enough quality strikes. Set to deal on two and two. Hit in the air to right field. Cespedes is there. One down. The batter number three. Here's Echeverria now. He's one for two in the ball game. Swing and a liner. And that's into the outfield for a one out base hit. The relay, and he's able to hustle his way up to second as he'll reach here with a two base hit. When it left his bat, I thought it might curve foul, but he manages to squeak it just inside the right field line for a well hit line drive double. By the time the right fielder tracked it down, he was easily into second. In now, Wei in Chen. And he looks at one in there, one and two. Three twos are scored here in inning number six. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. It's never a good look to strike well, out look, but nine. it's way worse when you Back do it with a guy in scoring position. Those Gordon. are the times you really want to see a guy battle and at least put the ball in play. Stepping in now, D. Gordon. He swings and grounds it to short. And a good effort on the dive that time, but this will get by him for a base hit. And not in time as the run scores. Well, he really picked his teammate up right there with two outs and following a strikeout to get the base hit and drive a run in. That is really a special feeling, but man, he really lifted his team up with that. Into the box, Christian Yelich. And here's a sinker that had a little bit too much dart to it there as it just about came in and nailed him. Hey, that's a classic piece of pitching right there. You have to back hitters away from the plate to make them a little bit uncomfortable. Now you can go inside or outside. I like that purpose pitch. Well, that's his third hit of the night. And are you surprised? That's three singles. Now sits three for four with three singles. Not a bad night. Standing in now, Giancarlo Stanton. He grounds it sharply to third. Throw in time, and the side is retired. Marlins forced to settle for one. Two, three, and four do up in the home half of the sixth. The Marlins lead it four to two. Digging in once again as Dribble Cabrera. He doubled earlier in the game, one for two to this point. And now the Marlins bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right hander start to get loose. Takes a look at a change up there and it's a ball and two strikes now. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Swing and a little blooper to center. Echeverria ranging into the outfield. One out. The left fielder, number 30. Riding in once again, Michael Conforto. 0 for 1 with a run scored thus far. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Hit to first. Bohr fields it cleanly. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Now batting. Here's you on Cespedes. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. 
ready to deliver the one and two. And that swung on and fouled straight back. We're in the sixth inning now of a four to two ball game. Two and two now with two away and the base is empty. Lifted into center field. Yelich is under it. No trouble with this one and the inning is over. Mets go down one two three still down by a count of four to two. Welcome back to City Field in Flushing. It's on to the seventh inning with the Marlins on top and it's a good time to check out our game summary through the first six innings of play. Hansel Robles is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number, number seven. 47, Ansel Robles. Ready for another shot now. Justin Bohr. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. A one and one count. Here's the pitch. Chopped weakly up the first base line. That's a foul ball. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. And he lays off it to even the count two and two. He's ready with the two two pitch. Hit hard up the middle. And that gets through so he'll have his first base hit make him one for four in the game now. With that, the Marlins get a good start to the inning with their leadoff man aboard. Well, it took him till the seventh, but he gets his first hit of the game here, and that'll extend his hitting streak. Yeah, seventh inning, you're thinking maybe one more at bat if his team rallies. So this was a big hit to keep that streak alive. In now, Marcelo Zuna seared down the first baseline. So definite problems on that last play and they'll hit the first baseman for the error. Martin Prado now it was a fly out for him in his last trip. And this is going to be a foul ball. Oh right there sometimes you can just miss a ball doesn't mean you have to swing and miss but that ball's right in his wheelhouse and he didn't square it up the way he'd like to he missed it and he indeed takes only the out at first as the runners move to second and third with one away now. Now batting Patrick coming to the plate now JT real Muto he's got a hit in three at bats to this point. And there's ball four now so the bases are loaded here on the intentional walk and the force at the plate is in order. The batter number three trying to pick things up where he left Adani, off a Danny Echevarria two for three with a double on his line so far. Seventh inning here at the ballpark four two our score a little bit outside two and one. Well when the pressure starts to intensify it often feels like the strike zone gets harder and harder to hit. This is a big spot here. Swing and a soft liner but this is hauled in by the second baseman. Up next for the Marlins. Ready once again way in chin. Fourth plate appearance for him tonight and why not. He's been in control all game long. And not a real good cut at that slider and he's behind one and two. Well here we sit two on two outs two strikes. Look they start off a swing and a miss that retires the side and that will do it. Marlins leave all three but they still lead this one four to two. Now with the plate David Wright one for two on his line so far in the game. Pitch on the way. High in the air and drifting out to shallow center. Yelich over to his left. He's got it one away. Now batting. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Wilma Flores. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ball game. Ready on three and one. Here's the pitch. 
Looking at strike two, a fastball that catches the inside corner. He's really throwing the ball well in this game, and the thing to me that stands out is that two-seamer. He's got great movement, and he's keeping hitters off balance with it. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. Up next for the Mets. Here's the catcher, Travis Darno. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. Two runs, three hits. One error in the game for the Mets thus far. Let's go, guys. Come on. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Well, we all know he's not the greatest threat with the bat up there. His numbers certainly aren't that pretty. But, hey, I give him credit. He's really working the count right here. And a 2-1 slider is looked at for a called strike two. Your Brad Ziegler is, is forced onto now the mound now following Miami. the injury. Number He'll get 29. as many warm-up tosses Brad as he needs Ziegler. as a result. Hit weakly back to the mound. To Gordon for one. On to first, and he really paid the price at second base, but it's a double play, and the inning is over. So they go down without a whimper here. Eighth inning coming up. The Marlins lead this one four to two. Your Fernando Salas will come now on in relief now as he'll make his 35th appearance of the season. Fernando Salas. Riding into the box, D. Gordon. Lifetime in this matchup, two for three. Full count, here it comes. Lifted in the air to center field. Under it is Granderson, one away. Now batting. The Time to bring you up to date on the Christian. numbers for our two starters. It's our starter comparison, and the hometown nine have had trouble generating much by way of hits, as you can see by the left side of your screen. In is Christian Yelich. He's working on a three-hit ball game right now. Ready with the one and one. There's a swing and a ball lifted to left, but back in the seats, out of play. It's one and two. Hit sharply toward the right side, but he'll barely have to move out there in right as he hauls this one in for the second out. So two gone now in the Miami eighth, and set to stand in the ultra dangerous Giancarlo Stanton. And now a pitch hit sharply on the ground, but a foul ball. One and two the count now. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball, and he sets him down for out number three. Miami down in order as they can't add to their four to two lead. So digging in now, Rene Rivera. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. Looks at a slider over the outer half for strike two. The one and two pitch. And there's a sinker that he just spits on as it misses low. And this one's chopped foul right at home plate. Another 2-2 offering. And another foul ball. Another try at 2-2. Bounced slowly back toward the mound. And he's retired here one away. Junichi Tazawa answers the call now, looking to get this one onto the ninth inning without any trouble. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Miami, number 25, Junichi Tazawa. Jose Reyes will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Jose Reyes. 
Getting late for two our score as we play the eighth inning. Line drive to center field. That gets down and he's got himself a base hit. Sean Gilmartin comes on now and this move Number looks three. to be all about playing the matchup here. Yeah and I don't think there's any doubt about that Matt. They want the lefty lefty matchup and that's usually the right move but we'll just have to see how this plays out. Curtis Granderson will be the first to greet him here as he'll stand in with a runner at first and one away. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. And that one right down Main Street. Might have been taking all the way right there. That pitch couldn't have split the strike zone any better. And you can bet he wants that one back at the plate. Ready with the one and two. And he'll stay alive here as this is chopped foul at the plate. It'll remain one and two. Oh, he might have got away with one. Two strike breaking ball that ended up being in the zone. I think he probably won that out of the zone. But fortunately, he just fouled it off. Again, he sends it out of play. Here's another one, two. To two balls and two strikes now. Well, you talk about fighting. He's fouling balls off, fouling them off in the one, two count. He finally took a ball right there. I wonder if he feels more confident or he wants to keep swinging. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. So he threw the slider darting away to him two times in a row. Now I don't think he'll go for it again. I'm looking for something hard inside on this pitch. And the runner back in standing. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. In the dirt here. Full count. Here it comes. Sure enough, there goes Reyes. Swing and throw. He's in there easily as the throw bounces on the way down. They ran the risk of a strike him out, throw him out play there, but that was a good job of getting in there successfully. On three and two, there's a decent chance the hitter puts the ball in place, so it can be a good time to be aggressive just like that. Here now is his dribble Cabrera and with men on base and two away it feels like this at bat could go a long way toward deciding this thing. No doubt Matt a base hit here changes this game quite a bit but if they can't score here it looks pretty bleak for them heading into the last couple of innings. Hit well on the ground to first and a backhanded reach at first but he can't flag it down but not in time as the run scores and the lead is trimmed to one. When that ball's hit to the outfield right there, I didn't think they were going to send it because he's got such a great arm. But clearly, he got home before the throw got there. That's a great play. Time called here as with the potential tying run aboard they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. Stepping in now Michael Conforto and this one's in the dirt runner holds as the count moves to two and one. Hitters count now. Here's the two and one. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. After it is Yelich. And that ends the inning. A run on two hits and they leave one. We've played eight full. The Marlins on top, four to three. Your Gavin Cicchini will stay in the ball Outline game as a new shortstop. Stop. Number two. Yeah, Seth Lugo enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Striding in to start the ninth, Justin Bohr as they'll look for some added insurance before the bottom half of the inning. Oh, he wanted that one, but it misses for ball three. Time to focus here. This game is way too close to be walking, guys, so we'll see if he can make him swing the bat on this next pitch. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Left fielder, 
Here's Marcelo Zuna. On the night, he's two for four with a pair of singles. One out, nobody on. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two. It's so hard to hit when you're behind the count 0 and 2, right? You have to protect for the fastball. You have to look for the soft stuff down and away. You're really at a disadvantage when you fall behind 0 and 2. Into the box, Martin Prado. It's sharply toward third, and that's in there. So perhaps some life here with two men out. So the top of the ninth keeps a rolling as he comes through with two away. That ball's right in his wheelhouse. You now, may as well take out a tee, set the ball right there, and say hit it as hard as you can, because that's what he did. Standing in now, JT Real Muto. And he puts it on the ground to second. That gets through, and he'll reach base again on his second base hit of the game. Breaking his heart, Matt. Breaking his heart. You got two now quick batting. outs. He's thinking he's going to cruise through this thing. And now look at it. Boom, boom. Base hits coming back at you. That's why you have to complete the inning. In now, a Danny Echevarria. Not a bad pitch there with two strikes, but it misses one and two. Well, no surprise on that one. That's the classic slider down the way, trying to get him to chase on that 0-2 pitch. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. The 1-2 is a breaking ball that can't find the zone, and it's even at two. Well, that's what you want from your curveball on one and two. You start it in the zone and let it break out of the zone where it can't be punished. And the right fielder is there to make the catch, and the inning is over. Marlins strand a pair, but they hang on to a one-run lead, 4-3. to three. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Your Brad Foxberger played. enters the These game to finish this one Miami. off here in the bottom of now the ninth. And batting in the seventh spot, number 26, Brad Foxberger. Now catching and batting in the ninth spot, number 17. Here's you on He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. Crowd gets up for the 3 2. And this is taken for ball four. So just like that, the tying runs aboard to start the home half. Baseman, At the plate, David Wright. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. A runner at first with no outs here. And a swing and a miss that time by Wright as he couldn't come up with it. One away. Really important time for a strikeout there, guys. Tying run at first, so objective number one is stranding him on base. And now with one out, it becomes a lot more difficult to manufacture that run. A ball and two strikes, here it is. Now a ball hit hard towards center. So this is pulled in by the shortstop. And he will scurry back to first as he'll think twice about trying to move up. Now batting, catcher, Travis. Digging in, oh, no. Travis Darno. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. A runner on first with two away. And he missed with it, ball four. So that means now the potential tying run will move into scoring position at second. The closer is supposed to slam the door in his opponent, but he left the door wide open with a walk there. We'll see if they can capitalize on it. back has them down to their final strike here it comes and he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two and think about it in game one of this series they've already had to go deep into their bullpen this could affect them for the rest of the weekend if they don't get really good starting pitching and he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Well, you don't want to get caught looking for the final out. That's a tough pitch to lay off. Impressive that he did. 
struck him out. So he'll strand the possible time run at second and a great job of working out of trouble as this ball game is over. Well, just another day at the office for these guys. That stretches their winning streak to five, and they're playing well in all three phases of the game. Pitching, fielding, and hitting. Who knows how long this will last? And it's a 4-3 finish in this evening's ball game. Miami slugged their way to victory with 15 hits. Wei in Chen earned his ninth win of the year. Brad Boxberger wraps it up for the save, his fourth of the season. So that just about does it for Harold Reynolds, Dan Plezak, and our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way on over to theshownation.com. Here now is our final line score tonight. First for the victorious Miami Marlins, four runs, 15 hits. No error. That is cranked. Deep left. Gardner leaps. Did he grab it? He did! Oh, what a grab by Brett Gardner to rob C.J. Crone of a long ball. Wow. You betcha, Tyler Clifford. Drake delivers as a drive to right.